What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mike Check Podcast. This is T Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tapping in. Today, we're going to talk about the upcoming matchup between Tim Zhu and Jamel Charlo at 154 pounds. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate your feedback and we thank you. All right. So, without further delay, let's go ahead and get into it. So, recently, Tim Zhu was able to become the WBO interim champion at 154 pounds by defeating Tony Harrison by ninth round KO. Now, in that fight, you saw some good things from Tim Zhu and some things that are going to need improvement. And you also have to question the actual conditioning of Tony Harrison going into that fight and how these things are going to affect the matchup between Tim Zhu and Jamel Charlo. So the first thing I want to start with is my thoughts on the Harrison Zhu fight. So I thought that something very specific stood out to me. And while he only landed about 25%, I think that this could be troublesome for Tim Zhu in the future. Tony Harrison was able to apply the jab. He landed 49 out of 198 jab attempts. What that tells me is that there's an opportunity for a person with a good jab like Jamel Charlo to actually make some things happen. Next, if your jab is effective, it allows you to set up other aspects of your offense. For example, if you could come with a double up on your jab and you're in the right range, you could follow that with a nice cross or the two. Um, if you look back at Charlo versus Castaño, you'll see that this was a combination that actually worked for him against another pressure fighter who's similar, but definitely different in the way that he applies his pressure. Something you'll also notice about Tim Zhu in his previous fight with Harrison is that he didn't really move his head off the center line. He threw his punches, he squares up, he stands in front of his opponent, and he just tries to overwhelm them with strength and pressure. When you're a bigger fighter or you're a wider fighter, sometimes you find a comfort in that. I don't think that that opportunity is going to exist against Jamel Charlo, who's able to actually move side to side. He's able to step around. He's more athletic than Tony Harrison at this point. And I think that Tim Zhu's going to find some problems trying to hit a moving target, even if it is a smaller ring. If you just compare the last two opponents, um, I don't think that Tim Zhu has faced anyone that brings the combination of tools that Charlo has that's also as skillful and experienced as Charlo is. Um, but I do believe that Jamel Charlo has actually faced opponents who have similar skills to Tim Zhu and also have similar power. Um, I don't think power is an issue when you're facing Charlo. Um, he definitely definitely has shown that he has a chin. Um, his punch resistance is still up. And even though he's been out of the ring for probably going to be over a year by the time they actually scrap, I don't think that's going to show up as rust or keep him from being at his best. In fact, he may be fresher because he's had some time off to settle down from the high of becoming the undisputed champion. And now he's back to the workman like mentality that he's shown over the last five or six years. Now, for Tim Zhu to be effective against Charlo, he's going to need to add some things to his arsenal. And these are the things that I've been kind of telling people about on Twitter and other platforms that make me concerned that Tim Zhu might actually need to take another fight before Charlo. Um, the biggest thing is he, he doesn't really throw punch combinations that aren't predictable because everything is at the same speed, hard. So when you throw all your punches at the same speed and then you throw the same combination repeatedly, there's a good chance that you're going to get timed and somebody with experience and somebody with their own offensive skill set can actually put you in a bad situation. And it's often a punch that you don't see that'll put you down. We did see Tim, Z, Tim Zhu get caught against Terrell Gauche and sat down early in the fight. You could see something very similar against Jamal Charlo because he's a bigger puncher than Terrell Gauche, but he's also a more effective puncher in terms of his selection. One thing that you'll notice about Derek James fighters is that he doesn't have them run their hands on the bag and, and do all these weird fancy combinations on the mitts. You see them actually moving, picking their shots. They use framing and things like that. If you look at Jamel Charlo, one and two, versus Brian Castaño, you'll see that he uses framing more in the second fight, but you'll see, and what I mean by framing is you use your hand for head control, you put it up in front of you, or you extend and you push, or you bat your opponent's guard down and then you throw a punch, which is more like a peel. But these are different control aspects that you can use to open up your own offense while also nullifying your opponent's offense. And then you also look at somebody like Castaño who threw a lot of punches, Jamel Charlo was able to make him put his hands in his pocket for stretches because he didn't want that return fire. He needed to remain defensively responsible. There's been lapses in Tim Zhu's fights where he's not defensively responsible and he'll he'll just not adjust his guard 
and he still struggles with jab defense. You could pierce his guard, and if you're using anything like a peel and a punch, these things can become problems for him. So I think that he actually needs a little bit more seasoning. This isn't taking credit away from his current achievement. This is saying that if you think that Tony Harrison is a good representation of him stepping up, you probably need to reevaluate Tony Harrison's last four or five fights, and you'll see that there's been a significant diminished skill set by him and it's mostly related to his punch resistance when he faces guys with big punches um you know before the fight i did pick harrison to win for my betting odds however from a strategy standpoint i did state that he probably gas out and tim zoo could catch him late and that's exactly what happened um you know i kind of told you how i was betting because the odds are just really good but for the most part when you look at a guy like um Tony Harrison at this point, many people were saying it after the fight, it kind of looks like he might be past it. And that sucks because he's a likable dude. Um, I think he did a really good job of selling the fight, making people want to tune in and watch and making us feel like he was ready for the fight. You know, he had the right energy. He was in great shape. Uh, we know that he's been in the gym because he was training Alicia Baumgartner. But unfortunately, it didn't translate to success in the fight outside of a jab. He put nothing with it. Now, if he was able to have success and, in my opinion, win three of the eight full rounds that that took place, imagine somebody like Charlo, who's going to definitely bring something behind the jab. He's also going to bring a lead hook. Um, you didn't see any hooks from, from Harrison at all. And with the way Tim Zhu comes in, if you just throw, you know, kind of a, a jab to, to, to move the guard and then follow that with a hook, something Charlo does well, that could be problematic for, um, that could be problematic for Tim Zhu. Um, I just I see a lot of flaws in the game and since it's kind of fresh in my mind I wanted to reflect on what you saw versus Harrison and then also think back to what you saw versus Gauche and then apply that skill set even with the added experience of those two fights apply that skill set and put Jamel Charlo in front of Tim Zhu I just think that it could be a big problem now i'm open to doing um a film study with plenty of people um, we're going to do an invitation in another video but i'm looking to set up a film study or better yet a live scoring session uh, we're going to be allowed to add up to nine guests well we'll just go ahead and watch at least six six rounds of a fight you know some of them will do 12 um and then we'll all score together just so we could kind of you know build this community and figure things out but for now, I'm going to wrap this video and just let you know, whenever they announce this fight officially, we're going to do a full breakdown and analysis of what's going to happen and um, just see if Tim Zoo is going to be that guy at 154 pounds or if he's just going to be another contender that has reached his ceiling with an interim belt. But we're going to wrap it here. This has been T-Word for the Mike Check Podcast. Until the next time, I'm out. Peace.